traditionally in busy public places like here in Canary Wharf, we've been told that the biggest danger to our money comes from pickpockets. But as the world moves more and more online and electronic money becomes more popular, it's cyber criminals who represent the biggest threat. We spoke to James Lynn from Sophos who told us just how easy it is to clone your credit cards, steal your money online and even empty your Bitcoin wallet. So a lot of people would think with a, a modern credit card like this with all its chip and pin and latest security features that it would be very difficult. But unfortunately, retail is as strong as the weakest link and a lot of countries where we do transactions don't support these more modern technologies. What I've got here is a little reader that can clone credit card information, uh, about 150 pounds, not from a criminal gang, but from Amazon, that's where I purchased it. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is go and make a swipe of this original card. Now on the screen here, I've got a copy of the credit card details, the expiry date and my name, and that's more than enough to make a transaction in somewhere like the United States. Now what we're gonna do is write this onto a completely new card. So you can imagine this might be done in an ATM or a POS, uh, a point of sale system at a shop. And then somewhere later, the cyber criminal creates a copy like that. And now we can go and use this to buy things in countries that don't participate in the more secure standards. Well, online transactions actually in many ways represent a bigger opportunity for the cyber criminals because they can achieve scale. And there's actually some terribly bad user habits that slowly IT security people have drilled into them that can get them in a lot of trouble. So what I've done here to illustrate that is I've set up my very own website, reallysecureretail.com. Bought the domain name, uh, bought a nice certificate, so I get that nice shining padlock that says everything is fine. Users know means that everything is trustworthy. I've even got a little banner that says my website's secure. So it's good to know that as I'm stealing your data, it'll all be encrypted perfectly. Um, in this case, I've cloned the Verified by Visa page. One of many web pages that we could do this to. It's not really about Visa, it could be MasterCard, Google, any other web page. I'm gonna create a phishing clone to try and get people to provide their details. So over on this system, my attacker is waiting for someone to be snared by the attack. And here, on this little victim, I'm gonna to go to reallysecureretail.com and I've got my verified by Visa page. As I say, this could be anything. It could be a shopping cart that asks for your address, your CVV number and your credit card, you name it. I'm gonna type in a credit card, like that. And there's a little capture as well, just to make you think everything's really fine and secure. Note the padlock and no error. I'm gonna hit continue. And over here, this redirects to the legitimate Verified by Visa website. So the user will now sign in and get going. On the attacker's system here, you can see someone has fallen victim, and we've got a copy of the credit card number, the capture, and some special session data that Verified by Visa silently included in the background. In less than a minute, we've created a page that to most users would look completely trustworthy, that's not going to show any weird alerts and could collect anything from credit card data to other personal information to commit fraud. Really simple. Let's take a look first at how you can steal some Bitcoins. On this system here, I'm running the standard Bitcoin wallet, uh, which could contain any number of Bitcoins potentially to be transacted. Now this computer uh, has been infected with some malicious code uh, and in Sophos Labs we see about 250,000 new pieces of malware a day. Uh, this just shows you the kinds of capabilities of any one of those really. So I'm going to run a little tool that was already built in uh, to this particular uh, tool that I'm using called the Bitcoin Jacker. And the Bitcoin Jacker goes and looks on the computer for any Bitcoin wallets that it can find. And we can see here it's found a wallet at this location and it's jacking the wallet. And it's written it onto my local system, so I now have a copy of it here. Now if the wallet wasn't password protected, game over, it's the equivalent of taking the cash out of someone's wallet, it now belongs to me. If it was password protected, however, things are a little more complicated. 
What we're going to do here is set up a keyboard logger. So anything from internet banking details, credit cards, or your Bitcoin wallet password can be intercepted and stolen. So I'm going to start the keyboard logger. And over here, just to illustrate the point, I'm going to open up a little text editor and type in, this is my password, it is Flibble. Really doesn't matter what I type into any program, it'll do. At the other side of the world, on the attacker's system, we run this tool here, key scan dump, and it shows us this is my password, it is Flibble. So all the attacker has to do is sit there listening to everything typed, pick out the sensitive data, they can decrypt the wallet and run off with it. New payment systems like Apple Pay are actually making some pretty big leaps in payment security. They've got dedicated hardware to make it much more difficult for the attackers to steal. And they're using clever cryptographic mechanisms. So in many ways, these are much more secure than the credit card we're walking around with today. There's one drawback. These are all connected to the internet. So if a flaw ever was to be found, the potential yield for cyber criminals would be huge. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Tech Talk and for all your technology news and reviews, make sure to check out ibtimes.co.uk forward slash technology.